property or maybe you have to implement it. Uh, in this case, the pros are that you can, if you have the source code, you can potentially integrate it in any embedded device. And the cons are that you have to do it. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it requires some integration work. And in some of the cases, the updates are limited to the application level. The examples here are the, the big guys, Azure, AWS, Google, and Hogbit. And well, it has something in common with the first one, and that is, well, as I was saying in the first group, that the, the cloud is strongly deciding what's running on the device. And we are going to try, try to avoid, it, avoid that. And then the third group is the agentless one, in which the server is in charge of communication with device using SSH protocol. So the update manager here is the scripts that are sent from the cloud. And the cloud client is represented by the SSH server. Pros, the only dependency can be SSH. Maybe you need something else to do the installation itself. And the, and the cons is that you don't get any feedback to the cloud because here the, the, the cloud is the master of the communication. Uh, example, Ansible. So now, how, how can we make this more decoupled? First, I'm going to take a little detour to show how we are approaching the problem of reproducible states. For this, we use containers and a state JSON. The state JSON is just pointing to one, two multiple containers. And each container has a root file system attached. So you are going to be able to know what's running on the device at any given time. And if you update it, you are going to know what is going to be on the device after the update. Uh, here you have the, ex the example of what our state JSON. Uh, it has the BSP with just a bunch of binaries, the kernel image, the modules, the update manager, which is Pantavisor. And then we have one application, only one container um, with the root, root file system uh, in a compression, SquashFS, and again, a, a bunch of configuration files. So this is the diagram now uh, where I have divided the application level in, into a set of containers, and I have changed the name of the update manager to container orchestrator because I think it's more appropriate for this example. So what's the container orchestrator? Well, it's the update manager, so it's in charge of installing the updates. But in this case, it's going to install and install containers and start and stop them. Uh, we have a, an implementation of this container orchestrator, which is Fantavisor. I have put the link in there so you can check it out later. And now we are going to take advantage of, of the use of containers. Instead of having the cloud client and container orchestrator in the same base system with all their dependencies, uh, we can move the cloud client to its own container. So this is what, uh, the cloud client. This cloud client has to uh, communicate somehow with the container orchestrator. It has to control it. And for that, we are going to, to need an open update protocol. But first, well, I'm going to talk about a couple of examples that we have implemented 
One is, one is uh, an Azure device update agent client. It supports uh, updates from Azure IoT Hub to devices that have the container orchestrator. Uh, you have the link in there too. And uh, another example is uh, our client, the Pantacor Hub client, uh, which can be used as an example to other implementations because most of the cloud uh, providers offers a uh, REST API. So you are going to have to implement a, a, a client for each one of them but they are all going to look pretty much the same. And you have the, the, the source code also in there. I mean, if you, because, well, I haven't prepared any demo for this presentation because there is no time, but if you want to see some demos, we are in a, in a, in a booth, booth 33 in level four, so you can, come later or tomorrow. I mean, we, we're going to be there uh, all this week. We can show you a demo of the Pantacor Hub client, maybe Azure client, or we can talk about how it, it is implemented in more detail. So this also opens other possibilities, not using the cloud, which is it can be convenient in some cases, for example, for development, just switching the <laughs> client with a local client uh, that can be managed from your host computer. We have also an example of that, which is the PBR SVK container, and an example of the tool that manages the PBR SVK from, from the host computer, PBR. Um, as you can see, the, uh, you cannot only get the local experience here. It's all about being able to switch the, the cloud container um, at any, uh, with an update. So you get the same base system always with the container orchestrator which is a minimal implementation of an update manager. In our case, it's pretty small. It's like less than two megabytes. Uh, so you can fit in, in those devices with 16 megabytes uh, of, of storage. So um, as I was saying, to allow control from a container, we need an update, uh, an update protocol. We do that by offering a small server HTTP, uh, that interprets HTTP requests with a Unix socket. And it can be made so you can only control the container orchestrator for, from some of the containers. Uh, we set it from the state JSON. So you, you cannot uh, mess with the, with the socket from the application level. This would be the minimal update flow. Um, well, it's pretty basic. First, we check for new updates in the cloud. Then we download the update. Then the cloud client send the state JSON to the container orchestrator. Then the cloud client send the state artifacts related to that state JSON. And then the, the new update is run. So for that, we're going to need at least these four endpoints or requests. Um, well, steps to install JSONs, 
objects, to install the artifacts, commands, to tell the orchestrator to, to run a given update. This can open other possibilities like containers controlling any aspect of the, of the device, uh, rebooting or powering off or whatever. And then some metadata so the, con uh, so the container can get uh, feedback information for the cloud. And, well, uh, this is the conclusion. This was really fast. <laughs> and I'm going to read this because I'm not going to explain it better if I improvise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Following the Unix philosophy that teaches us to do one thing and do it right, we have decomposed the device side software to get the simplest possible container orchestrator, Pantavisor. More functionality can be added to this, to this basic yet versatile setup in the form of containers with privileges that can control the orchestrator using an open protocol, like we did with our cloud client container. So, well, <laughs> that pretty much sums up the idea. Um, with this setup, you, you can pretty much use any cloud that offers a REST API so you don't have to marry your cloud provider. You can still do it, but it will be a healthier relationship because you have a way out. And then you can get all the advantages of a local experience. In our case, we have a CLI, CLI tool, so you can update your device from your host, but we have also worked on some other examples like a web user interface. Uh, so you can update a web user interface that it is running on the device and you can use that to update the device too. And then course like tool for the same. I mean, it, it's very, powerful in our opinion. I have put here some references with the links that I mentioned before and some more like our documentation and if you want to take a look. As I said before, you can come and visit us in booth 33. If you liked the idea, we can talk about it. If you hated it, you can, we can talk about it also. <laughs> yeah. uh, some heated discussion is not bad if you are talking about embedded devices. And, well, I have a lot of time, <laughs> so we can do a lot of questions. <laughs> Um, yes, well, I'm going to repeat the question because uh, so the guys in the streaming uh, can hear us. Uh, you have asked if we have some kind of uh, mechanism to uh, sign the updates uh, with a certificate or uh, and check the integrity of the updates. Uh, well, we have, uh, well, as I explained before, uh, we have the state JSON uh, to make reproducible states, but it, it can also be expanded to sign the updates because in the end, an update, a version of the device is only going to be a JSON and a bunch of artifacts. So we use, we, we can use encry encryption, I mean asymmetric encry encryption to sign the, the device with a certificate that can be in a secure place in the device, like TPM, TMP, TPM. TPM. <laughs> um, and uh, we can also check the, uh, the integrity 
of the, the artifacts, because I'm going to go back to the JSON state. Well, this is because, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's a good question because I forgot to explain some things. <laughs> um, well, the JSON is pointing to these hashes are just uh, artifacts that come with the, with the update. So before installing or before running the update from the container orchestrator from Pandavisor, we can check the integrity of the artifacts before starting the, the containers. I don't know if, if that asks, uh, answers your question. Mark? How do you do if an update um, does occur? I mean, your file, and not the update case, but the command, what if you update and then something goes wrong? Uh, yes. Uh, as we have a, a version history, the device can roll back if something goes wrong. Uh, Uh, it's continuously checking if the containers are running, if they should be running for that version. And then if something fails, it restarts the device. Uh, then the bootloader has the information that it needs to, to roll back to a previous version that was marked as a good one because it could be started. Uh, and I forgot to repeat your question, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I think uh, with the context, uh, anyone can understand it. Uh, you had another one, I think? Yeah, I guess I'm kind of backing up to a different level. Um, I'm curious how you end up with a world where you're on an embedded device using containers to manage updates. And instead hmm. of doing a more traditional, like, you know, we just bring down a whole new boot FS and install it and we're good to go. Hmm. Um, uh, well, he has asked if, um, I mean, how, how have we ended up using containers in a world with uh, specifications so constrained? Yeah. Uh, in my words, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, well, uh, as I said, the, the container constructor in the end is like uh, less than two megabytes. Uh, when I say the word, the words container orchestrator, I guess you might think about Kubernetes or Docker. And we are trying to make something similar to what Kubernetes did, did with the cloud, which is that developers could forget about the infrastructure. But we are doing in small devices like 16 megabytes. There are people that have thought about using Kubernetes and Docker and all the stuff, but if you have to fit that in 16 megabytes, well, <laughs> you, are going, you are going to have a hard time uh, because you have to leave space for the application level, which is the uh, well, the level that is going to take most of the of the storage, for sure. So, uh, yeah, I don't know <laughs> where I was going, <laughs> but yeah, we use containers for the, the 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 short answer is that we use containers to to get the reproducible states because we don't know any better way of doing it and because we could make it somewhat light. I mean, it of course has some uh, overhead, but it's not that bad. Uh, and we uh, have uh, tested examples for device, small routers with 60 megabytes or more. He's, 
uh, it's LXC. Yeah. He asked if uh, which container runtime we were using. Each application is a squash of first, yep. Uh, in, the, in the state JSON, I have only added one f because it didn't fit to have two, <laughs> but uh, each container is just uh, these three things. LXC configuration file, the root squash FS, uh, Docker digest, uh, this is for PBR, the, 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 the tool from the host. And a run JSON that is going to be uh, parsed by Pantavisor. So yeah, we use LXC. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. How are the containers cleaned up after a successful successful update? Um, you mean the the containers from a previous? From a previous yep. Yeah, well, you can do it if, uh, it, I mean, it's configurable, but we have a garbage collector that cleans up the, the artifacts that are not being used in this current uh, version, the artifacts that were used in the version where we roll back if, if something goes wrong, uh, the logs, etc. So the garbage collector, <laughs> and it's uh, configurable. You can set it to clean it always or uh, or do it only when you reach a, a threshold in the storage. Thank you. How do you manage your version of the each application and then if each application or things that we are using, for example, kernel, <laughs> How do we mani manage the list of versions? Um, in the device side, well, it's just a bunch of JSONs and artifacts. Uh, in the cloud side, you get more visual stuff. I mean, it's not that I don't want to sell our our cloud client, but the <laughs> the talk was about ditching the, the, the cloud providers. But we have a, a, a cloud a UI that is amazing, that is called Pantacore Hub. And there, and there you have all the, well, a version list. Uh, you have the, the, all the artifacts from all versions in the cloud. So if you are trying to go back to a, a revision that was deleted uh, in the, by the garbage collector, you can download them again. I don't know if, if I'm answering your question. Uh, I think he is asking for the process of updating. You, you know that some platforms mm -hmm. use like two partitions. They put everything in this partition and they swap basically after this. Everything is installed in this partition. They swap the full blowout of it to start the, the, new, the, the, the new system with this partition and then when they need a new update, they Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I, I'm not sure if, if I know how to answer this question because, well, <laughs> we just download the artifacts of the new, I, I can describe it. Do you use a naming model or do you have a, a flat object storage? Flat object storage. So we download the, for a new update, we download the new artifacts or they are sent by, by the cloud container uh, using the Unix socket. Uh, and once everything is already there, we check the integrity, uh, the signature, if there is any. And, and we try to progress to the, to the new update with the new artifacts. Yep. <laughs> Better now. <laughs> Uh, 
uh, they communicate uh, through a file. We have uh, in a file, in a text file, the version that worked, I mean, the, the version that we roll back to and the current version. So in case the, the device is rebooted unexpectedly, unexpectedly or because of an update that needs a reboot or for any other reason, uh, Pantavisor writes in the, in, the config, in the bootloader file the revision that it has to be, that goes next. Mm. We support U-boot and Grab. Uh, I don't know that question because I wasn't there from the beginning. <laughs> but I guess, well, uh, taking into account the current solutions, uh, they wanted to uh, get something for these routers, small routers of, uh, with low storage. I think that was the starting point, the inspiration of, of, of the idea. Okay, so the question was, how does this scale when we have uh, thousands of thousands of devices to manage, uh, right? Uh, sorry, what? Billions. Billions. <laughs> yes, I mean, my big cannot think that big. <laughs> but my mind. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we have another uh, web user interface, which is called Pantafleet that uh, is more uh, well, focused on that kind of tasks uh, to manage uh, big fleets of devices. And from the device point of view, uh, well, we, we don't have any mechanism to not uh, flood our uh, cloud API, I, I guess, right now. But if we get to that point, we will implement it for sure. <laughs> we will have the, the, I mean the, the resources. <laughs> uh, we're a small team. Uh, I mean, if you, can, if you want to meet the, most of the team, you can go to the, to the booth. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, so that's also part of the, of, of, of the talk. Right? Part of the talk is that the, the cloud level communication never exists in cloud providers. It's right. it just the device part is the one that is then connected to whatever the user is calling the right? update agent. If I have an update agent, like the Android UK is about our own, uh, the same package of update solution. That's for people that don't have anything and want to be involved in the content. So it, it can also just connect you to the say, Okay. Anything else? Okay. Uh, I, 
I guess we can leave it here. Thank you for coming. And well, as I said, we are in, in we will be most probably all the time in, in our booth. So go there if you are interested for demos. Uh, thank you. <laughs>